Welcome back. The U.S. presidential election is exactly one year away. A new polling suggests that if it were held today, former President Donald Trump would likely return to the White House. The New York Times and Siena College asked registered voters in battleground states their choice in a hypothetical rematch for the White House. Trump came out ahead in four of them and nearly cleared the margin of error in another. They were all states President Biden won three years ago. Well, one year on, of course, is an eternity in politics, but all this is concerning news for the White House nonetheless. For more on the 2024 U.S. presidential race, I'm joined by senior and senior political commentator Scott Jennings. Good to have you with us. Hey, thank you. So you're a Republican commentator. What's your opinion of this latest polling? Is Trump doing well or is Biden doing poorly? Uh, well, Biden is poorly, first and foremost. You know, Trump has his own limitations, and there's certainly a lot of Americans who don't want to vote for Donald Trump again. Uh, and really, re-election campaigns for U.S. presidents are almost always a referendum uh, on the job that that person is doing. And right now, that's where Joe Biden has real problems. Uh, Americans have a sour view of the economy. Uh, they are unhappy with inflation. You know, the president has branded it Bidenomics. That whole label has tested poorly in, in national polling. And so he's really struggling. On top of that, in the, in the New York Times swing state polling that you mentioned, voters registered very real concerns about Joe Biden's mental acuity. In fact, in all the states, over 60 percent of the voters said he did not have the mental acuity to be president of the United States for another term. So to say that he's got a, uh, a lot of problems would be an understatement at this point. And it's kind of interesting, right, because there isn't much of an age gap between Biden and Trump. At the next election, Trump will be 78 years old. Biden will be 80. Uh, but the perception is that Biden is much, much older than Trump uh, but, and therefore too old to run. We did hear from a former Republican congressman, Charlie Dent. Uh, I just want to play what he had to say last hour on CNN. Most voters think that one of these two candidates is too old and one is too crazy. Uh, and I, I think the ground is fertile right now uh, for an independent centrist. So do you think Joe Biden can shake that old tag and could a strong independent candidate win a presidential election? Yeah, great questions, because I think they're going to have a huge impact on what happened. First of all, no, I think Joe Biden... The image of him is set. Uh, and, and look, uh, it, it not, not a lot of this has to do with anything other than just how people perceive the person. So whether it's their speech or whether it's their mannerisms or their movements, that is the clear perception of Joe Biden. And it's not just Republicans. There's a lot of Democrats that also think he's too old and they wish he would not have run for another term. Uh, regarding whether a third party could emerge here, absolutely. You already have Cornell West trying to run on the left side. You've got RFK Jr. trying to run. And then there may be a third person that gets in, as, as Charlie was mentioning there, kind of a centrist type of person. Ballot access is an issue. It's not easy to get on the ballot in presidential elections in individual states in the United States. But if any of those people or multiple people do make several ballots in swing states, there is no doubt in my mind that there's a bunch of what I call double haters, people who hate Trump and hate Biden. They're looking for any other door to go out of. And if you give them one, two or three choices, they may just pick one. There's been some polling to indicate that a lot of those double haters, those independent voters uh, are looking for something. Maybe RFK Jr. right now is picking up most of it. I'm not saying he will in the end. But yes, this, this, this could upend the election and really uh, throw several of these swing states into question. Yeah, it certainly would make it more interesting if, if someone strong did enter the race at this point in time. But when you look at the polling, those four swing states that Biden won in 2020, that if an election were held today, would go to Trump. I have to say, when I was up in the mountains north of Atlanta over the weekend, there were, there were quite a few people with Trump 2024 hats on. So it seems no matter how many lawsuits Trump's facing over fraud or election interference, some of his core supporters don't seem to care. But from your perspective, Scott, what would another four years of Trump look like? Well, regarding the Trump supporters, look, uh, the first time he ran, he got 46 percent of the vote. The second time he ran, he got 46 percent of the vote. So uh, I'll let you guess what I think he's going to get in the next election. He's got, he's got a <laughs> course. I mean, it passed his prologue. I mean, he's got a core group of supporters. Now, I do think if he's convicted of a felony, there will be some Republicans who do not want to associate their franchise or their vote with him. 
And so that will be a problem. We don't know if he's going to be convicted, but if he is, that's a, a real issue for him. But for the next four years, I mean, look, you've got a Trump with experience and you've got a Trump that sort of feels like he knows where all the levers and knobs are now. And you'll have far fewer guardrails uh, like you had in the first term, either in Congress uh, or in his administration. So I think you could expect to see a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of aggressive Donald Trump, especially uh, uh, taking on people that he thinks uh, wronged him uh, over the last uh, several years or since he came onto the scene. So it would be a would be a quite uh, a rambunctious and aggressive Trump, that's for sure. It's interesting um, when you see other Republican candidates on the debate stages so far, very few are willing to go after Trump, even though he seems to be, you know, their strongest opponent. Why don't they take him to task over his conduct? Because the only ones that really have we've seen so far are the likes of, of Nikki Haley and Chris Christie, who seem to be polling really well. Yeah, uh, Nikki Haley has taken him on more. She's actually kind of wearing the, the mantle right now of the most anti-Trump candidate. But a lot of her uh, criticisms of him are political, you know, that he can't win or we need to nominate someone who has a better chance of winning. The reason you don't see more Republicans go after Trump on the issues or uh, on who he is is because Republicans like Donald Trump. I mean, inside of all this polling, you find a great affinity for Donald Trump among Republicans, and they're trying to get those votes. So they're trying to make a, a strategic argument, a calculated argument. The trouble for that argument is when you see all this national polling and you see Donald Trump beating Joe Biden in swing states and in national polls, Republican voters are saying, well, wait, I like Trump and he's going to beat Joe Biden. So why do I have to vote for somebody for a strategic reason when I can just vote for the guy that I really want and I really like because he's going to win anyway? And so I think that argument, that strategic voting argument, is ultimately going to come up short. I think Trump is is not uh, a lock for the nomination yet, but he's getting there. He's he's in a really strong position. Mm. All right, senior political commentator Scott Jennings, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Well, on Monday, the former president Donald Trump will testify in the two hundred fifty million dollar civil fraud trial against the Trump Organization, as well as several of his family members and executives. And after testifying on Friday, his son Eric Trump told reporters his father is, quote, fired up ahead of his appearance. The trial has put a spotlight on the Trump's family's business dealings, including the role played by Trump's children. Watching the war between Israel and Hamas is difficult for millions across the world with loved ones in the region. Still ahead, we'll meet one Palestinian American family that has lost dozens of family members in this conflict.